Hey gang, Lou here from Jersey Shore Fabricators. Once in a while, you get a car that just won't leave. Case in point, 2009 Pontiac G6. Got the fire-breathing 3.5 liter motor in it. I'm actually kind of embarrassed about this car. Uh, this thing's been towed in four times over the past six weeks. And honestly, it's getting on my nerves. So today we're gonna try to track it down and get this thing out of here once and for all. Little backstory on it. Uh, it presented with a intermittent problem where half the cylinders weren't working. So what we ended up doing was having to replace this harness here with one from a junkyard. Because right here, there was a broken wire. And that was knocking out the, uh, the power feed for half the injectors. So that was problem number one. Problem number two is we had issues with the battery terminals. Okay, so the positive one has been replaced. Don't mind my coffee. But this negative one, no matter what I do, this little mechanism here will not tighten, and the thing just kind of moves around on its own. So we looked into that. That wasn't it. We chased the ground wire down. That wasn't the problem. Then we had an issue where the starter broke it, it physically broke the uh pinion gear the pinion gear that comes out was broken so we replaced it with a junkyard one two weeks later that one broke fantastic then we put a new starter in it so far so good now the issue that we're currently fighting with this car is that when it rains it stops running and it won't start. Now, I got to tell you, I, I went through, I already shot this down because I didn't want to start making a video and just be chasing my tail. I wanted to have some kind of good content to bring you. So I'm going to preface that. Okay, I'm going to preface, preface everything else that I do from here on out, let you know that I've already tracked this problem down. But I'm going to show you all the exact steps I went through, step by step, to chase this down. And it was quite a process. So, grab a cup of coffee, sit back, hold on. All right, now, this is the original fuse block. This is exactly as I got the car. This is exactly as I got the car. There's no cover on the fuse block. So, that coupled with the fact that there's a complaint of only having issues when it rains, I already know what I'm starting to suspect here. But let's verify the complaint. All right, so right now the car is running, All right? We have nothing on the dashboard yet, give it time. When we look at the scanner, I got a P0412. This is the important one, 1682, ignition one, switch circuit two. Why is this important? Well, glad you asked. So now we look at the wiring diagram here, okay, we're going to see that coming out of the ECM, we have two ignition circuits, all right? So we have one here that's a pink, one here that's a pink. They're off of two different fuses, though. This is actually fuse 3. My printer cut that off. This is fuse 16. Now, because the cover's missing... We have fuse 16, and we have fuse 3. So fuse 3 is ignition 1, and fuse 16 is ignition. Now, here's the fun part. When we come to the actual fuse block itself, we have fuse 16, which is here, and right there that's where fuse 3 is supposed to go but yet the car runs now <laughs> watch this so you can see it doesn't sound right it doesn't feel right 
Now, if I try inserting a fuse into where fuse where fuse three is supposed to go, that's what I'm doing right now. Now we hear all kinds of relays come on. Something in there is not happy. So now we'll go back and try to start the car again. And we've got nothing. So, how do we shoot this down? So, of course, now the first thing we want to do is verify we have power on that fuse three. Okay, that's the second thing. First thing, let's turn the key on. Okay, so we're getting our power there. Of course, there's nothing on the other side. Because there's no fuse in it. And we already know 16 is working. But the reason why it sounds so funny is because only half the engine is trying to start. So, how do we know power is getting out from there to where it has to go without being grounded? Well, I'm sure there's some really scientific methods. But here's what I did. Going back to our wiring diagram here, we know that fuses 6 and 13 join together and go to, I'm sorry, 6 and 13... This is terrible. Hold on a second. Fuses six and, uh, six and three both come together, go to connector X1, pin 19 on the ECM, which is a pink wire. We also know the other side of it. Uh, when we come off the relay, Okay, it's going to be on pin 9, which is a pink and black, going down to the uh, ICM, which is basically the coil pack. So, testing power there, I find that we sometimes do and sometimes don't have power, which is really frustrating. And... Okay, so coming over here, if we look at the same thing, this is coming out of our relay. All right, follow the wires down. Hold on, I got the wrong diagram there. All right, so I bungled up that video a little bit. Um, but let me go through the process. I didn't, I, I have it, I just don't know where it is, but I printed out the wiring diagram. On connector X1 at the ECM, which is this connector here, on pins 39, 40, and 41, we should have power all coming from the relay box, which I didn't. I was missing it on 42, which is a pink wire. <clears throat> now, the car, believe it or not, did run with this fuse box in it. What I ended up doing was squirting it down with water. That, that, that got the car to stall and not do anything. So at that point, I made the call. You need a, junk, you know, you need a, a PDC, a power distribution center. So I had the customer get a power distribution center. Got one out of a junkyard. Now, here's the new one. A couple of small differences, though. Right here... There should be a fuse right here. There should be a fuse for the ABS. There isn't. Also, there should be another relay or a fuse in here for the secondary air injection, which there isn't. So it's throwing a code for that. So all I did was replace this. Started the car up, and car ran fine. Started fine. Sprayed this one down with water. Guess what? 
I had a no start condition. Now your start relays I get this to stop moving here for just a second. Uh Okay, so we need 31, 33, and 32. 31, 33, and 32. Okay. So now the difference with these, I shouldn't say the difference, but what the problem was is that water was getting in there and we were having an interruption. So what I found was the solution was to put more than a little bit of dielectric grease on all these connectors. Okay. Sprayed it down with water again. Problem solved. Now, of course, the other big thing that will prevent this in the future from happening is to leave the damn cover on it. It's there for a reason. So, it was six weeks of hell trying to get this car shot down. Oh, yeah, let me explain that to you real quick. On... The original, now this is for the 09, relay 53 here is for the air pump, which is your secondary emissions controls. This fuse block came out of a 06 or 05, and here, even when we look at the cover, that relay is not used. So that's why it's throwing a code for that. So right now it's just a matter of the customer tracking down the proper fuse block, and then I'll reinstall it, and it's just these four screws and a couple clips and the thing pops out. It takes about 10 minutes. And then everything with the car is fine. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do while I'm in here is I'm going to replace this battery terminal um, <clears throat> so that that's on there the way it's supposed to be. But what kicked this whole thing off is that this has got one of those big stupid audio systems in it. And his trigger wire for the amp which is here he keeps on sticking underneath this fuse and actually had shorted out between these two terminals so some of these problems were customer created so we're going to run that back inside the car get that to a proper 12 volt switch source and that'll solve that and then you can listen to his loud music as much as he wants and drive the car in the rain Okay, so the other fuse block is in. As you can see now, we've got every light on for brake and traction control. That's because of the um, <clears throat> fuse that's not there. And then when we check the scanner, I'm going to let this run the codes here. Secondary air injection valve. Ignition switch one, circuit two. That'll go away. I know that because I've already done it. But it should just come back eventually for the uh, uh, just for the uh, P0412. All right, gang. So to wrap up, well, let me start over. The last part of the video that I shot, for whatever reason, the voice and the lips were out of sync, so um, I'm kind of having to do this over in my dining room. I was sitting here editing, and uh, it was terrible. So, can I say technical difficulties? What, <clears throat> I, I guess part of the point... When it comes to tracking down 1682, which seems to be common with these cars, uh, which is that ignition one circuit two, uh, what I found is a lot of people have thrown ignition switches at it, haven't been able to fix it. They've thrown PCMs at it, haven't been able to fix it. And, you know, sometimes a wiring problem <clears throat> doesn't present exactly as what it is, you know. So that's why, you know, me and a lot of other channels out there tell people, don't just start throwing parts at cars. You know, diagnose it, shoot it down, fix it right, get it out of your life. Our problem we had with the car is that every time it got towed in, it worked. It always started. It ran. It did everything it was supposed to. 
uh, when it was in a no-start condition, by the time I was able to get to it, it started talking. So, well, I should say it started running. So, when you're going through it, it's very important to have the proper wiring diagrams. I, I have a program that I pay for, and I'm able to print out anything that I need. As long as you can read them and understand them, you should be able to shoot down your own problems. Another part of it is protection. You know, the cover, the factory puts these covers in place for a reason. Uh, you know, they're, they're not made to be submersed in water. And my guess is what was happening is that he was hitting big puddles with the car. Water was splashing up under the hood, getting down to the PDC, shorting everything out. There's a lot of corrosion in there. I want to try to actually cut open that, that PDC because it seems to be two layers to it. Uh, and, and find out where either the brakes in the copper wire are or where the shorts in the copper wire are. You know, I, if I can get around to that and do a video of it, I, I will, and I'll bring that to you guys. So, you know, the dielectric grease is also going to help, and that's something I do on a lot of electrical jobs. Uh, it's just good insurance. I don't know. I, I you know, I, I, all I can say is that the, the, I, I got my butt kicked by this car. Uh, you know, I had made the call early on <clears throat> about it being the PDC, but I, I couldn't verify it. And I'd rather not fix a car than throw parts at it that I don't know whether or not it needs. So I left it not fixed until I could actually, you know, have that hard failure and, and, and go in and fix it. So hopefully somebody out there learned something from this. Uh, you learned a few procedures. You know, copy the uh, wiring diagrams that I had on there. Take a screen grab of it if you want to. So uh, that's that. So, you know, I'm wrapping up this video with that. You know, the car's leaving. I'm waiting for the customer to get me the proper, uh, the proper fuse block for it. And then I'll put that in. It only takes about 10 minutes. And they should be good to go. Next problem I got to track down on that car is that the blinkers don't work. And I've I've got that shot down. I'm pretty sure it's the uh, the multifunction switch, the you know the actual turn signal switch itself. So that's one of those. You know, you got to take the steering wheel off and the airbag and all that fun stuff. So I guess in closing, uh, follow your procedures, follow your nose, listen to your gut, uh, but always verify, verify the complaint, verify the actual problem. Uh, and then verify the fix once you're done. So if you saw anything in the video that you liked, give us a thumbs up. Uh, hit the subscribe button. We're going to try to, I always say we're going to try to upload videos and then we get busy with work. And it just, it takes a lot of time to do it. Uh, we're going to start getting videos out every Friday as far as like little quick tips around the shop. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you around.